Hi there, my name is Sebastian Munoz, and today I'll be presenting my honors capstone, namely titled A Predictive Analysis of the United States Presidential Elections Using K-Prototype Clustering. So to kind of kick us off, I have a quick introduction in which the primary goal of this project was to create a predictive modeling tool that relied on a clustering algorithm in order to forecast future United States presidential elections. The reason for incorporating a clustering algorithm was to be able to rather than just have a straightforward forecasting model, really break down the states, determine some of their key attributes and see what is, you know, determinable and what we can kind of understand about the United States presidential election. So some of the research questions that this project then sought to explore, keeping in mind what I was aforementioned, is listed below. It's, is it possible to predict which way a state will vote? What are some of the key factors and population indicators that really distinct groups and affect election results. And so a quick timeline before jumping into the results of this was that the at the beginning of the semester, my capstone project was approved. And by the 16th of February, I was able to compile all external data, uh, visiting a bunch of governmental sites and census data to collect electoral data based off of the last 12 years of elections, as well as some really unique insights into the characteristics that distinct every single state. Uh, by the 11th of March, I finally created my K prototype clustering model and began to optimize those results. By the 25th, I performed all the relevant data analyses as well as implemented the forecasting tool to then ultimately present my poster at the Honors Design Expo earlier this week. And so some of the methods that I really utilize here is the K prototype clustering process. This is really the algorithm that the majority of the project revolves around. The reason for choosing this as opposed to a K means or a K modal pro clustering processes are that this one is actually capable of reading in both categorical and numerical data variables, at which point you begin the initial prototype selection process by specifying a random number of clusters and the data will then consider the dissimilarity measure to allocate each one of those data points and continue reallocating them until there are no better moves to be performed, at which point you indicate a best result. So initially, I had used a K prototype of six clusters. And as you can see, it was able to classify each state, including the District of Columbia. That's why there's 51. Um, however, we also incorporated the elbow method a cost estimation way of determining what the actual optimal number of clusters should be. And so based off of the analysis here, you wanna find at what point the line starts moving almost parallel to the horizontal axis, at which point you can see it's three with that little divot there. And so from there, um, we're then starting to like change lens and look towards the future for that weighted forecasting aspect would be to then make sure that there is no class imbalances amongst any of the the data points that were collected or the variables, reducing them through feature selections in order to eliminate any additional noise and make sure that the results are streamlined, incorporating the electoral college process, which is consists of 538 state electors based off of the Congress distributions that each state actually has as of right now, and then incorporate them into that weighted forecasting tool to predict the next 2024 United States presidential election. And so based off of this, we ran the K prototype clustering model once again, this time with three clusters, as you can see here, the results and the estimation method, the elbow method still identifies that three clusters is the optimal number to use. So that is what we moved on with. And you can see the state breakdown right here. Uh, they're broken up into the three different clusters. Uh, obviously cluster one contains the most number of states. However, cluster two has quite a, a fair amount as well, followed by cluster three then. Uh, a quick little just tidbit of interesting facts that kind of distinguish each of these clusters is that cluster one tends to be the most households with like internet access, the lowest bilingual rate, the smallest percentages of foreign born populations. Whereas cluster two tends to have the most meet, like highest meeting uh, household income. It has the largest rates of educational attainment. And cluster three tends to have some of the largest bilingual rates, largest foreign born populations, 
as well as the youngest median average age population, which is why I guess it's interesting to note that cluster three really constitutes four key United States um, states, namely California, Texas, Florida, and New York, since they are some of the most globalized. So just kind of understanding these clusters might allow you to understand the results of the electoral college process, which identifies that the Republican party will win with a 276 to 262 electoral college, uh, college vote count as compared to the Democratic Party. Um, now it's important to jump into some of the understanding the results and being able to determine some of the, and answer some of the earlier questions that were introduced during the introduction section. And so a clustering breakdown of the counts identifies that the majority of cluster one states did tend to vote Republican. A majority of cluster two states did tend to vote Democratic. And cluster three is just really interesting because they're just the largest uh, electoral college states. They have the most unique attributes that really distinctify them. So there is an even spread there. However, it's interesting to note that they were differentiated based off of how large those states were. So you can see ultimately there were more Republican voting states uh, constituting a lot of the smaller ones, which ultimately was able to allow the Republican Party to vote to win the election, the electoral process. Um, some of the data analysis that we then jumped into was like really detailed population breakdowns. Some of this I mentioned in the earlier slides, but I felt important to collect here. So this is just detailing cluster one. As you can see, they have a really high native born population. Uh, cluster two tends to have a, a pretty sizable percentage of the population that has disabilities. And then population three, cluster three, they have the uh, most, the largest number of population, the most average born. We did similar analyses throughout housing situations. So from here, you can see that cluster one has the smallest house uh, meet household income. Clustering two, cluster two has really high percentages of households with vehicles. And cluster three contains the most households with computers, which is really interesting to note. We also pulled some a really interesting population indicators across all of them, a median age, bilingual rate, jobless and poverty rates. You can see from here that cluster two tends to be the least uh, broken down in terms of jobless and poverty rate. Cluster three tends to have the youngest medium age and the largest bilingual rate. And then we jumped into some different kinds of analysis, really breaking down categories. So here we can see that these three charts, uh, namely titled one, two, and three for clusters one, two, and three, show that educational attainment. Uh, you can see that the cluster two is actually the most educated of all of them, followed by cluster three and then namely cluster one. We did similar analyses throughout occupational breakdown, through health insurance coverage, class of worker, so whether they're a private or government, self-employed, unpaid worker, and then finally, an industry breakdown of that population. So from this, we were able to draw some really interesting and unique classifications, uh, which I summarized earlier in the result page. But it allowed us to back and kind of make sense of the results of the forecasted uh, presidential election. So and finally, before jumping into some acknowledgments, there are some few questions that I want to just jump through. So. What really inspired me to take on this project was the fact that as a graduating senior from the University of Michigan, coming from the engineering school, I've never really been all of that interested or knowledgeable about how United States elections work. Uh, being an international student, that's something that I've never really had the privilege of participating in. And I always found the electoral college really confusing and and. I just wanted to really understand, could I use the tools that I have learned inside the industrial and operations engineering department and during my time at Michigan to really expand my scope and focus and try and learn things and make sense of things that I'm not that aware of. And so I found this to be really interesting. And I was very fortunate to have been able to connect earlier last year with my honors advisor, uh, Professor Edgar Franco Vivanco as I had performed some research with him uh, through the University of Michigan's MEDIS department, which is the Michigan Institute for Data Science. And um, from there, we were able to continue working these past two years alongside on various research engagements 
um, since Professor Franco Vivanco does work in the Department of Political Science, it really opened up my eyes to the possibilities of things that are outside the realm of engineering. And I felt that it was, I, I'm very fortunate to have been encouraged to pursue this by, by him and have the privilege of working alongside him this past semester. Um, and then that being said, what problems or challenges that I encounter? Uh, one key problem or challenge that I encountered was the initial time that I performed my forecasting tool. I did not account for the results of the clustering algorithm. I just performed a straight forecasting method looking at the uh, results of the last couple of years. And in doing so, I actually determined that the Democratic Party would win. However, since that failed to take into account the the purpose of the, the project, which was to incorporate the K prototype clustering method. I had to go back after further deliberations with my honors capstone advisor and implemented a weighted forecasting method that really is capable of connecting everything and making the results make sense with the analyses. And so all in all, this was a really interesting project. I've had a wonderful time being a part of the engineering honors college, working on this capstone has really pushed myself and with that, I want to give a really just I want to acknowledge two key people. And um, first, Edgar Franco Vivanco, the assistant professor of political science, my honors capstone advisor, who I've had the privilege of working with throughout the semester, as well as Rachel Armstrong Saran. She's currently the senior academic advisor and in charge of the honors program. And my whole time at UMICH would have been different without her. So, yeah, thank you very much for listening. And if there are any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.